Thank you so much for joining us. We know that you're really busy um, and it is a great... The world can seem like it's in total chaos at the moment. Take the war in Ukraine and other conflicts, the challenges to climate and also the challenges to democracy itself. What would your message be to world leaders in terms of what they need to do to get the world back on track? We had a very useful and constructive uh, exchange of views with uh, distinguished members of the Security Council this morning. My message to them is that uh, we are living in a world where multilateralism is in crisis. When it comes to crisis in multilateralism, then United Nations is most uh, responsible for that. Among all the agencies of the United Nations, I pointed out that it is this Security Council uh, who should be responsible for this multilateralism in crisis. What can the US, the UN, neighboring countries or major powers do to revive negotiations and make substantive progress toward peace on the Korean Peninsula. As a former Secretary General, and also as uh, one of the Korean citizens, uh, and as one of the global citizens now, I am deeply concerned by what the North Koreans have been uh, making this kind of uh, uh, behavior, unacceptable uh, behavior. Now, North Korea is the only country in the world since the end of Second World War which has declared that they would have a first strike if and when they feel that any uh, uh, crisis may be imminent to them. It's very arbitrary, irresponsible, no country in the world has ever declared that kind of a, a first strike. When they feel it is imminent, then who decides how do we know that it is imminent or not imminent? There are some, some countries who are now developing, like Iran and other countries. Then it will make a very bad precedence now. So there should be a firm and decisive action. Otherwise, whole international community, United Nations system, will lose its credibility. It's a matter of global security issue. What are the off-ramps? I mean, how do, how do world powers, whether it's the UN or the G20, um, thwart Putin while still giving him a way out? How do we end this? Every war has to end. Um, and the, so I think, you know, uh, we need to encourage more thinking about how it will end in order to get the idea that um, this needs to end, as opposed to increasing the military arsenal on both sides and the devastation um, to the population in Ukraine. By using uh, a wonderful instrument that uh, humanity has invented and that has allowed us not to keep uh, living in little feudal states, uh, killing each other, and that is diplomacy, you know, and politics. So I hope one day uh, diplomacy is used uh, to, to address that. Uh, given what the U Ukrainians themselves have spilled, it would be utterly unreasonable, unjustified to expect them to make concessions. There is a, a way in international diplomacy in which you can give both sides something, but it's not at the expense of the victim of the crime of aggression. And in that arrangement, in the final analysis, Russia can take something. But again, it's not something that ought to be forced upon Ukraine or Ukraine has to give it. It can come from another direction. And I think that's, that's the arrangement in the end that would have to be thought of. Uh, we've seen inequality in so many ways between rich and poor countries, most recently with the COVID vaccines and now the monkeypox vaccines that have gone to rich countries but not poor countries. How do you get richer countries to help their poorer neighbors? 
So I would say, you know, we are dealing with contagious diseases. In the case of COVID, it was a, a virus that could be spread in the air and infect uh, any, any person. There were no uh, borders, there were no seclusions that could prevent the infection. And yet, we are still seeing a rather uncoordinated uh, action to adopt uh, whatever is needed to prevent the next uh, pandemic. You know, this is just a foretaste of what we're going to experience in climate. And at some stage, you're going to reach a point where there's a full recognition that we are on lifeboat Earth. The panic will, the, imp, the sort of the urge to panic will be there. And then we have to make a decision. Are we all going to hang together and work together to make sure that we find a way out of this? Or are we going to go the route of, of the way in which we responded to the pandemic and tip the boat completely? You know, everyone for themselves, everyone for the exits, abandon any hope, you know, only on the boat. And that is the sort of sharper lesson of the pandemic, which we want to try and offset.